they've met on a dating app. Uh, they've started talking, and this was months before anything had happened between them. So on the, on the night this has happened, she's been at a nightclub in the Barbican, where she has already told him that she likes to go to. It's it's been agreed that the, that they they met on the Barbican, uh, close to the taxi rank. Um, he has recognised her and started a conversation with her. Um, he wants to take her immediately back to his house based on that conversation that they've had months ago and two minutes of meeting him on the Barbican. His idea is that they go back to his house straight away. She says she's meeting some friends up on North Hill and that's where they go. They've had more drinks and then she's lost her mobile phone. At that point, she's ready to go home and he tells her that he will share a taxi with her. But it doesn't occur to her that she's in any trouble at all at this point. She's got somebody who's willing to share the taxi fare home with her. She's got somebody who's already spoken to a friend of hers and said, don't worry mate, I'll get her home safe. She hasn't asked him where he lives because she doesn't think she needs to because she thinks she's going home. So the victim now is in a place she doesn't know with no phone, no access to her friends, her family, or to call the police. And her choices have now diminished to, I, I have to go with this man, he said he's going to get me home safely. So because she doesn't think she's in any trouble, because she has trusted a stranger, and he is a stranger, the CCTV that shows him leading her by the hand back to his flat. She doesn't know she's in any trouble at this point. And it's then that he turns and only then that she realises that she's in trouble. So once inside the flat, he then says he's calling the phone and he says he can hear it somewhere in the flat vibrating. And he keeps trying to reassure her that it's in the flat somewhere and they'll find it later and, and that she should just lay on the bed and rest. So she does this, she keeps asking the phone, he keeps saying he's calling it and saying you can hear it vibrating, but the phone was never there. He then subjected her to a brutal and sustained attack over several hours where he would sexually assault her, he would pin her down, kneeling on her chest, she has injuries that support this. While sexually assaulting her, he would also strangle her to a point where she would lose consciousness. Once she regained consciousness, he would give her a break and then start again. And he would continue the cycle over and over, the cycle of fear that she was in. She said at any one time she thought she was about to die. And um, she has also said in her statement to the police that he told her she was very lucky there were other people in the flat at the time or it could have got worse. So from that, she believed the only thing worse than what was happening was death. The strength she showed and the bravery and her motivation for supporting the prosecution is to, in her words, she doesn't want anyone else to go through what she has gone through. So if she can highlight the what happens if you do come forward and are brave, she said that's all she wanted to do is to show other people that if you do come forward, you will be believed and you will be supported. I've never come across anything as severe as this case. Um, I believe it's the, one of the worst cases of this kind that Devon and Cornwall Police has ever had to deal with. Throughout, he has never shown any remorse, has never made any admissions. I think the level of free meditation he showed leading up to the incident, what he did on the night, how he manipulated someone very vulnerable through alcohol into gaining his trust, lying about the mobile phone, making her think the phone was in the flat, 
then making sure he knew where she lived by taking her home was done to intimidate her and keep her in fear. And I believe because of that, he is a very dangerous individual. It seemed very clear he um, is leading a double life. The impeccable serviceman who is well liked and well respected by his peers. And then this other side to him where he's using the dating app to prey on vulnerable females, as was the case with this victim. I think for me, there are no winners. Um, something horrific has happened to the victim and, and she will live with that. Um, her family will have to live with what's happened to her. I think Mr. Evans has lost his liberty because of it and his family and friends will suffer because of that. There are no winners, but there is justice and there is some comfort in that.